This episode is dedicated to our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you all. Hey, Gab, how's it going? Really good, Blab. Awesome. Really like this chapter. I like this chapter too. Like I, I thought. Hmm. However, let let me just state that after having read this chapter, I feel pretty confident that I didn't put enough energy into the last one. Interesting. I feel like I wasn't paying close enough attention because we were rusty, and we hadn't done this in a while. And it now had, I'm looking yeah. back at the previous chapter, all the previous chapters, and I'm like, huh, there have been hints along the way. So yeah, I, don't I don't know. I think I missed. Too. I mean, I th- well, we'll get to it. We missed like, some stuff. That but, guy in the last chapter, like, he seemed shady. Come on. Of course he did. His name was so Skior. So it's not like we missed that. No, 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 no not no. that guy. The the guy that sent him in this direction. The wizard on the whose street. soul had been The quote subsumed. unquote wizard, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, we find that out later. But I mean, at that time, he seemed shady. Like, ugh. I think Ged felt at that time he kind of had no choice. Oh, we can talk about too. that in a minute. Um, yeah. Welcome back to Sci-Fi and Fantasy Read Along. We are Gab and Blab, and today we are here to talk about Chapter 7, which is called The Hawk's Flight. How do you feel? Do you feel good about this chapter? I know you liked it. Yeah, I feel good. This chapter, um, I went through a lot of different emotions in this chapter Ooh. with with Sparrowhawk. Feelings. With Ged. Oh. Feelings are a form of weakness, just so you Feelings know. Feelings not like I felt for him. I just felt everything that was going on. Like, I felt what he was feeling as it was happening, and they were not wrong feelings. No. You know? I Maybe and not. It was but, all, they okay. were all, like, true feelings. I feel like you're being and really they were justified. vague because you're well, not you don't trying like to spoil. Me talking... you're trying, right, you you're don't trying. like me talking yeah. about things out of order. I don't. So, but... so why don't, let me ask you this. There's a lot going on in this chapter. Yeah, How are a... you breaking up the chapter this time? You've got time? The, the everything that happens at the court of Terranon, and then you've right. got everything that happens after the court of Terranon. But like like you said, there's a lot that's going on, but at the same time, like nothing happens. Yes, but there's a lot of like lore in this chapter, tons, kind of that tons. that's just kind of like Psh. this is the reward chapter. This is like the point it in a video game where you're like. Oh, you get to talk to that one NPC that explains everything. Yeah, or well, at least most things. Well, it's not a, it's not an NPC. It's not casually done. It's like you're being rewarded. You're literally being rewarded for your attentiveness in previous chapters. Do you want me to tell you the secret that I found? Yeah, I want to know. Chapter three, towards uh-huh. the very beginning, when Sparrowhawk first met Nemeral. Nemeral showed up, and he's got a raven. And Nemeral, remember, is from the, the, the country or the land of Oskil, which is where we are right now with Sparrowhawk. Right. I was trying to remember exactly where we had heard Oskil before, and I remembered ravens. The raven and... of Oskil, I... Nemeral, right. the, yeah. the, the archmage that died saving Sparrowhawk's life. They had their initial meeting, and then yeah. Nemeral disappeared. The raven stayed behind for just a moment, and the raven said to Sparrowhawk, Terranon, Osbuk, Orek. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yes. That is insane. <laughs> the raven was trying to tell him something. Did we, have we seen the words no. Osbuk, Orek? No, and in this chapter, we only learn Seret. That's the only word we learn in this. It, that well, means silver. Her... Okay, right, right, right. But he, the the Lord, also mumbles a few words, but not he those does. Words. But we don't learn what they mean. Huh? And none yeah, of them no, match. I didn't. No, I checked. Because I did not go back to look at that. I just remembered. Okay, Oskil, Ravens. I didn't like go back. Uh huh. So, wow. I yeah, did spend yeah, some yeah. time going back this time because things kept popping up in this chapter that I was like, "Huh, yes. this has been alluded to before, or whatever." Um, there was another thing I went back and looked at, but we're going to talk about that later. All right. When Geta wakes in the tower. He's like richly dressed like a prince and he's sleeping in this like incredible bed down and silk and blob furs everywhere. And it's so easy to imagine, but the way it's described, like Ged, just, it's like so he's never been in no, a room he's like a goat this. Herd. He's never seen these things before. It's like, what am I sleeping on? He's like sleeping on a cloud. Yeah. He doesn't get it. It's like the never ending story. Yeah. It's just a really opulent bedroom. It is. And um, we meet the lady 
of this place. This place mm. is called the Court of Terranon, which we knew he was kind of heading towards because of the the ex wizard from the previous chapter that had kind mm-hmm. of been like, "Oh, you can go there. They will give you a weapon suitable for your task." Never mind. I'm out and you know, he took right. off. Right. Well, we're here now, and this is also the white tooth-like structure that he had seen in the last chapter when he was marching through the moors following Skior. Right. Um, and he, at the end of the last chapter, he busted through, he made his way through the gate, and that was, that was where we left him. And then, like, he heard someone's voice, too. Not that it matters, right? Like, someone was, like, calling to him, yeah. And he, when he awakes, he is here. He is in the court of Terranon, his... Uh, destination no i don't know no yeah, it burned he burned his staff he like remembers the otak and he has this feeling of like dread knowing that it's not with him right now so it's outside being it will be there but it's not there well he has mm. no idea where it is well the lady was immediately familiar to me it was because of the wording of her description when her hair was described as a fall of black water mm-hmm. so I, I knew who it was but like Sparrowhawk doesn't pick it up. He doesn't recognize her. And it says kind of over and over and over again throughout this part of the chapter that his mind is muddled. Yes. Like he's under an enchantment. And now Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, Gab was right. All those (laughs) chapters ago, Gab was right. She had said that maybe the daughter of the witch had enchanted Sparrowhawk. Right. Making him want to go and read that particular book. And now I'm kind of like, it's possible. It's much more possible. I think so far, and especially in this chapter, I think we can see that a lot of things were set up in the first part of this book to, if we're told a name of somebody, we might be seeing them again. You know, or if we're told a description of somebody, we Uh, might might be seeing them again. We never got a name for the daughter. No, 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 we didn't. So it was it was not even required that there is a name. Well, Sarette, the girl, she's the lady of this place. Right. Hold on just one second, though. Help me remember, because I may be misremembering. Hmm. I thought she was, and maybe that is the same woman from the school that brought the wizard home, wanted to take wizard. Uh, that was the lady of O. But not the lady of Oskill? No. Totally different person. Yes. And the Lord was different. He refers to her as the Lady of O in this chapter and remembers her and how beautiful she was and is distinct from this girl. Okay. Okay. That's where I'm just yeah, She would be the Lady okay. of uh, Terranon, I believe. Um, why do you think Get thought of her, though? This isn't in this moment. This happens kind of late in this section of the chapter, and it's when I think she's trying to seduce him. So I think that he is remembering that attraction that okay. he had felt to the Lady of O, because she's, we're jumping ahead. We meet the Lady of the Court of Terranon, and her name is Sarette. Um, And we meet her Lord as well, Benderek, and he is described as like tall, grim, white, and I think he's cataracts, and he's three times the age of Sarette. And he doesn't talk much. He doesn't ask Sparrowhawk any questions about his passage. He's just like, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Hmm. Yeah, he just leaves it to her, pretty much. And him. He leaves him to her as well. So when we were talking earlier about not much happens in this chapter, it's because it's like just days go by. Days and days go by. Mm -hmm. And he's constantly muddled, but they talk every day. And like I think she's playing the slow game. Definitely. Like trying to befriend him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have to go anywhere. Recover your strength. The shadow is stuck outside. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. It's not getting it, in here. You're safe. No. Uh, we'll help you. Right. Yeah. We're good guys. We're the good guys. Right. Right. Le Guin is doing a couple of things to me, at least, through Sparrowhawk. And one of those things is she makes me think that Sorette, this girl, is kind of like a victim in this case. Like, <sighs> Sparrowhawk sees her as a possession of this Benderek guy Mm -hmm. as just a jewel in his hoard. Mm -hmm. And when you you spoke earlier about feeling things throughout this chapter, and this was an example of what I was feeling on behalf of Sparrowhawk towards Surrett Mm. as this chapter progressed. I understood that sentiment, but I was already feeling skeptical. Well, obviously. I mean, his mind mind is being muddled. Like this whole situation is just uncomfortable. 
And that may be true also, that she is just like a possession of his. Um, that also could be true, but I didn't like care. Well, I didn't have any reason to care until she took him to see the stone, like that's in the basement. And how does that go finally? He's just like... Uh... He starts to have suspicions that he didn't find this place by chance, that he was brought here, that he was guided here. And then he asks about the stone and she's like, oh, well, let me take you to it. It can answer all of your questions. It can help you out. It can it can be your slave. Basically, it's a, yeah, anything. Perhaps an evil way can lead to a good outcome. And so she takes him down to the stone. And I'm like, whoa, that is a uh, I don't know what the right word is for that. This is like a disguised evil statement that she just made. Quickly before we go on, just as a plot note, like. Ged does kind of start to, like, he hears the accent of Gaunt in her voice a little bit. So he's kind of starting to, even though his mind never, like you said, gets unmuddled. But I think little things are, are clicking in, but not, not big things. And not she, right things. when he wakes up, he she says, like, we've met before. You don't, uh -huh. you probably don't remember me. Oh, of course you don't. Like, she knew because she's muddled well, his mind. Well, she's also beautiful now. And it's been so long now. ago. I wanted and... to ask you about that. Let's talk about her and her beauty and your question. Write it down if you don't have it written down. It's At the end, after we have seen all of the stuff that happens in this part of the chapter, mm -hmm. because I want to talk about her, period. Like, yeah. no, no, I don't. I want to talk about her. Okay. <laughs> you didn't catch that? Never no. mind. I'm just going to blur past that. So Soret guides Sparrowhawk, and she unlocks a door that he had not noticed before with the silver lock. Then they go into another room, and there's a golden lock, which yeah. she also unlocks. And then there's a third lock, which is magical, and she gets them through that as well with a, with a, a spell. Yeah. And it's just this dungeony room, bare walls, bare stone. Nothing's worked. There's no furniture. There's nothing. But with his wizarding eye, Ged notices that the very center stone in the floor is this old power of stone. Well, it's dark and shadowy. Yeah, just the description of it, you know, it does, it's not good. It's a bad thing. It's bad. It's a bad thing. Yeah. So I went back because I couldn't help myself. Yeah. Because I knew like that we're in the far north right now. I remember mm -hmm. that he'd been heading, you know, by looking at the map, you can tell he's been heading north, 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 north. And I remember Genshir warned him that something in the north was waiting for him mm. and wanted to kill him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's also the tale that Ged read when he was researching the shadow that he'd accidentally released with, oh, that guy, I can't remember his name. He has the crazy name. It's basically the same back as forth. With one small difference. Oh, yes, yes. I can't the remember namer, at all The master now. namer. Something I can't remember his name. And it's too hard to remember. I'd have to look at it. So I went back and there is the, uh, what is it called? It's a book called Matter of the Dragons that, that Sparrowhawk had been researching to try to learn everything that he can. And if you look back at that, holy smokes, it is super, super accurate. What chapter? It's on page 84. The quote there is is all about like kind of what happens to Ged, or excuse me, Sparrowhawk. It's, we we even commented on that. Then. Oh my god, I have I didn't underline it, but I put like a psh, psh, like the whole section like. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> um. So go vi revisiting that section yes. now it makes a lot more sense than it did even then, and even then it was kind of like okay, we can take this as like what had happened, right? Because it was similar enough to what had happened to Sparrowhawk. Yeah, and uh, which did devour him out from within and his shape walked destroying men. Like, it's the same thing. Right, and at the same chapter, we got the... Genshir told us basically the same thing, so we were kind of like, yes, this... But now it makes a lot more sense, don't you think? Now that we've seen a Gebeth in action... Mm-hmm. And it's almost like we kind of moved past this a little bit and, like, forgot about it, even though the Shadow's always been chasing him. So more is the Otak. Vetch early on had said that being befriended by a beast was a sign that you would be spoken to by old powers of stone and spring. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a rough quote. And then, of course, you know, the Otak does go with him and Nemeral had the, the raven and etc. But this is this thing in the floor of this tower may even be the same old power of stone that overcame the dragon lord from the tale, the matter of dragons. It certainly sounds similar. There's no reason why it couldn't be. It said there that it was something, it was a stone in the north and Ged was being, you know. Seems pretty spot on. 
It does seem related. It seems related to me. Anyhow. Interjection. Kurim Karmuruk. That's the master what namer. Name. What a name. And you know he chose that on purpose. <laughs> Okay, so this stone in the floor, yeah. which is one of the old powers of stone, and I feel like we might have gone off on a tangent, but we're back. And Sorette is encouraging him to ask it questions, to touch it. It can help you, like, do all of these things. And he's like, no, absolutely not. And he informs her matter-of-factly as though she didn't know. Right. The old powers, they will work through men, only evil. Like, you can't touch them. You can't talk to them. Like, we should not be near this thing. And he also says, it is light that defeats the dark. Oh my light. God, that was... No, well... I, I think he... I think his no. mind was... He was starting to, like, realize what's going on even more. Like, wait a second. No. <laughs> You're wrong. You know, like, you there's levels witch. of subtlety... There's And, like, some things are just really unsubtle. And the thing that you're referring to, she said that sh only shadow can defeat shadow, only dark can fight dark. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a little too unsubtle, maybe. Yeah. And he's like, what? You got to get yeah. out of town. Right. Light it, defeats no. dark. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be silly. It's like, e even in my muddled state, that's ridiculous. Well, he won't touch the stone. He doesn't want to ask it any questions. He's so smart, actually, in this chapter. I was very happy. I didn't think he was going to touch the stone. I didn't know what was going to happen, but he seemed fairly wise. I, f I thought lucky. You think lucky? I thought so, yeah, lucky. Do you think that it's partially just the, his own, the personal strength that he has in general, the greatness within him, let's say, that sure. is kind of a, par a partial shield? I think it's Benderek in this chapter refers to gauntish wizards as like being clever. Mm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's possible. I mean, Meaning I'd, to me, I thought he meant like tricky. Um, he meant I it negatively. Too. No, no, no. Just like hard to trick. Oh, no. They're clever. He, mm, he was saying it to her in anger. He was being mean. Soret is trying to work both sides of the coin. Right? Yes. Oh, yes. And she gets busted. I think it's without... By both no coins. Yes. Both faces. But without knowing anything about her past and how she got here to this... Uh -huh. uh, ca not castle. Fort? What is it's it? It's a tower. Tower. Um, she's uh, worked her way here for a reason. They all they I both have their mom, agendas. Don't you think her mom must have sold her to It's this possible. Man? Sure. You don't. You, she you think could have it's been at least. She wanted to be here. Um, that's also possible. She could have been trained for this purpose. Three times his age. Like or I said, three times her age. There, she's there for the stone, not for him. Obviously, like she's married to this dude. That's how you get the closest to that stone. He is the lord of that stone. How mm. else do you get close to that stone? Ged doesn't want anything to do with that stone. He warns Sarret against it, and they, you know, she's she kind of blows it off. She's like, "Oh, okay, well, I, you know, I wasn't really serious about it anyway." And they leave. It's not long after that they start talking again, and they get back to talking about the stone. Did you understand that she was trying to seduce Ged Sparrowhawk? Sure. Yeah. But hmm. of course she's seducing him. Did she's you, trying I mean, to trick him? That. She's trying. The whole time, yes. Uh huh. Did you understand what? She, did you understand that she was betraying um, Lord Benderek? No, not until that sentence. I thought they were both just trying to use him. When she said that I will be your lady or whatever. Yeah. To the Sparrowhawk. Yeah. It's too bad he was listening. It could be her way of just getting Sparrowhawk, and not necessarily that she's going to betray Benderek, um, even if he thinks she. Yeah, is. she's playing both sides. <laughs> and maybe she is. But Benderek, having overheard that statement, is mad and like mm -hmm. tries to change her form into something. In D and D, would be baleful polymorph, right? <laughs> so what, like, what make be. her into just some like well, unknown like, being of cells? Kind of. Sparrowhawk said like maybe a, a, a old hag or you know I don't know a dog or I don't know something or like something an old bean or something. Well, to like, change her form. Like right yeah. now, she's a beautiful woman, uh -huh. and to be changed into something horrible, right? That's what old Benderek is after because he feels betrayed. And Sp Sparrowhawk just with his hand, like, knocks the guy's hands away. And he's like, no, 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 you're not doing that. He's protecting her, um, even though she just tried to betray him. 
Do you think Ged's own strength is what made him get through this mind muddle? Like, how did he get his strength back again? It's not really explained. I don't think it was a gift. I, d I do think it was him. Yeah, I do too. So I was looking at Taoism mm -hmm. recently because I kind of want a better idea of... Because I know, I know circles are important to Taoism and going in a pattern and, and going with the flow is kind of like a a simplified version of mm -hmm. what they're after. That's funny. I was thinking about that earlier today. That's funny. The philosophy, I guess. It'd be a simplified version of the philosophy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like, I feel like those things might be related. Do you remember how when they were trying to get to Roke, it was when Sparrowhawk was trying to get back to Roke after dealing with the dragon of Pandora and he was being opposed by the wind. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. That is the opposite of going with the flow. Sure. Yeah. Right, He was going against nature, as yes. it were. And this is kind of like a tenant in the philosophy of Taoism is that you'll know what the right action is because it'll be easy. right? And we'll get to that also at the, later in this chapter. I am suspicious that the lies that are so far afield from what Ged and Sparrowhawk knows to be true, I think those kinds of things... Those are like triggers. ...could very easily trigger light to come mm -hmm. back in, you mm -hmm. know? Sure. Because... He, he already knows how it actually works. It's already in him. Yeah, he already know, has that knowledge. He has uh, the education. Yeah. From the the the, why, the Isle of the Wise, right? And I, in my own mind, and yeah. us knowing that he is a great wizard, will be a great He's wizard. a great wizard. I feel like that sort of stuff would be innate in him or innate in a great wizard to be uh, able certainly, to. Certainly, yeah. Certainly I more likely than in your average goat herd. Right. They right. would touch that stone. Like, what? This will make my goats live forever? Excellent. Did you notice this statement that evil finds it difficult to find purchase inside good people? Yes. So that is credence to the notion that it's hard for Ged to be possessed. He's not willing, right? Yeah, yeah he's actively fighting this and has been. And the, yeah. the wizard that he met in Havnor... Willing, right? Willing right. evil. Skior, who was an evil man placed in the path of the shadow. Right. Evil man, willing participant. Mm -hmm. But Ged is not. Ged is, Ged is a good guy. Is the late, is Soret or the Lord, do they have, do you think they're possessed at all or they're just bad? Or influenced at all, I should say. By? By the, the Dark Stone. Just have yes. been in the presence of that dark stone. So, yes, I do think that they're both influenced by the stone. Sparrowhawk had been concerned that he'd been guided to this location. When he has that flashing moment with the light and he has the, his moment of clarity after mm -hmm. speaking and realizing that Benderek is listening and all this kind of stuff, he realizes that that wizard was working for the stone that Skior was working for the stone. Like all of these things are actually, the stone has been pushing him forward. The shadow has just been following behind. Does she say that though of her own free will or does she say that after he like confronts her about it? Cause she's like, well, no, that I thought dude he just sent figured it out. I thought she had said like, yeah. The... Regardless, it, do yeah, it, doesn't it doesn't much matter. matter. Doesn't... The goal of the stone is to enslave Sparrowhawk by having him touch or ask a question, the stone, right? Mm -hmm. And then they were going to let the shadow in to devour his soul. I was thinking that the stone, if it didn't, it would at whatever it did, it would at least weaken his will or weaken it was whatever going to make that a is. slave of Sparrowhawk and then let the shadow eat his soul. Yeah. And then it would have control over the shadow Gebeth that is also a wizard. Right. Yeah. It's made mention like it's easier to control a Gebeth. And it was the two. Of, well, is it the Lord that said the two of them were going to? It doesn't matter. But they were going to control this thing. The Lord of Terranon mm -hmm. is. I assume working exclusively for the benefit of the stone. Definitely. Whatever the hell, the old power of stone. I assume he has no other purpose in life. Soret, though, the Enchantress's daughter, like she may be here of her own volition. She may be here to wrest control of that stone for herself. She may be that ambitious. Mm -hmm. But I feel like she's a prisoner here. And I feel like it becomes very obvious when she can't find the exit to the tower. When Sparrowhawk's like, let's go, let's get out of here. He's, you know, he's going mm. to kill you if he can. And she's basically saying the same thing. Like, before he releases the servants of the stone, we have to flee. And she can't see the exit, even though it's right in front of her. She can't? Mm-mm. 
Ged sees it and he leads her through the gate. Okay. Right. And that's when he finds the dead Otok outside. Is that before or after she's like, change yourself, change yourself. I think it's right in, I don't know. It's right in that part. So that was, I mean, that was a very sympathetic moment for me, you know? And it's like, how does, how does a 17 or 18 year old girl end up married to a 50 year old man? How, how was that meeting arranged? Mom probably, like you said, I think mom sold her or uh, arranged I mean, don't even have to it. sell. It's just an arrangement, just arranged right? arranged it, yeah. yeah. I'm an evil woman and you're an evil man and let's, let's, here's my daughter. She was obviously being used long ago as a child as well. Man, I mean, seems, do you think that that was of her own point. V- volition to try to trick him? I doubt it. Like, she would have to know about that stuff from somebody too to get him to she did. open she that did. book. She certainly did. Yeah, but like, okay, so like she was she was completely a normal girl until she's like, can you summon the dead? No, I'm saying like she's been groomed, her mom or whoever. She's of course. been groomed she's, for this position, let's say. And yeah, I think an overall you're right. She probably is and was a prisoner. And yeah, I found that spot. I reread that a couple of times and I guess I, I cannot find the gate. There's a great charm on she's, it. Quick. I mean, on some level, she's not. She's not there by choice. And it is interesting, though, because she can obviously escape. do magic. Yeah, but uh, obviously the stone's magic is more powerful than hers. Yes, but not Ged. So I think she's asked it questions. I suspect she's asked it questions. She has information that I don't think she could have if she didn't have some form of divination or scrying. Sure. Just even and, about the shadow period, right? Like, uh-huh. Do you think they actually saw the shadow as he was running or just saw him running? I don't know what they saw, but it did have a body for the for a time right before the staff burned up. It had a body, Skior's body. Is the Otak dead? Yes, yeah, best I can tell. Yeah, he held he held a bloody body in his hands. It was covered in snow. And said it was stiff. Yeah, and this is a creature that doesn't like the cold in the first place, and he's been in that tower for days. I don't know why the Otak didn't go in with him when he went in. Yeah. And uh, what happened to his clothes, his old clothes? I don't know what happened to the Otak, but it's dead. It's a stiff and cold, light and stiff and cold in his hands, and like we just move on from it. Well, we're moving on in a hurry. It was a, a hurry, sad actually. little moment. Yeah, I agree, he had no time a... to grieve. Yeah, we are in a serious hurry because Lord Benderek, the servants of the stone, they're coming. He's a little annoyed. She turns into a gull and flies, and then I think he finds the Otok and he picks it up, and then he too turns into a faster falcon mm. or something. First, he picks up a um, blade of wild grass and he turned it into a staff. <laughs> he turned it into a staff to try to like fight these things, beat those bird shapes off. And then he saw them. Ugh, this is the good in him, I guess. He saw them mm. go after the gull and had to mm-hmm. like rescue her or something. Like, what was that all about? She did help him escape. That's true, but only because and Ged is a good guy. She wanted to use his powers too. Sparrowhawk is a good guy. He is a good guy. So and you do good things when you're a good person. And those those servants of the stone, they're obviously evil. Oh, definitely. And then plus, it's described later too. I think that they're just all sorts of things you've never seen before, just like old and monsters. And and so yeah, he turns into a hawk. Not what kind of hawk was it? It was. I can't remember. It wasn't just a regular hawk. It was like a flying fast. It was sort a of souped hawk. up hawk. Yeah, the pilgrim falcon that flies like an arrow. Yeah, super super fast. But he's not able to get to her in time. The it seems like they tore her apart. I think like with the otak, it's just like there's a lot of blood and white hair all over their mm. beaks, and yeah. no gold to be found. And that's pretty much it for that section of the chapter. The, the hawk flies, gets away from them. The old power of stone doesn't want to follow over the water. Yes. Also remind me of Sabriel. Right. Um, So he flees, and that ends that portion of the chapter. There's another portion to this chapter, and that is beginning down in Ray Al B. With the return of Ogien to his home, much delayed. Yeah. But he's returning on or about Sun Return. Right. I think that is the uh, the beginning of winter festival. Sun return. To me, it sounds like it's the end of winter, beginning it isn't of spring. Though. 
I know I had the same confusion, but it oh. is not like Ged's birthday. His name day happened on Sun Return, and it was the beginning of winter. Okay, because it said the margins of the field were frozen, and the sear moss was traced with flowers of frost. Okay, yeah. And if you recall from last chapter, Sparrowhawk had started heading to the north as the winter was beginning, and it just got colder and colder. That's as they right. Went. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes so sense. So it's the beginning of winter. It is on or about Sun Return. Um, and that is when Ogian returns home and is getting some water for his tea. And then a, a pilgrim falcon lands on his arm. Yeah, just right hey. on his arm, just claws yeah. in there. What's up? He noted that there was no tags on it or anything. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not a registered AK pet or whatever. <laughs> Does he come across those a lot? Like, that was kind of weird to me. All the time. All the time. <laughs> He's like, I think I've named you before. Come on side. But he asks the word, are you a messenger or a message? Yeah. And then takes it inside. Um, we actually get to see Ogian use magic several times in this very brief chapter. He is one of the few people in the world, only person on this island of Gaunt, that could turn the hawk back into Sparrowhawk. Right. Then he just puts him to sleep. You know, he turns it back into a person. He weaved it mostly with his hands. Oh, yeah, I like that And then he sees part, him, yeah. he's like... Oh, that's, this kid can't talk. <laughs> he just... Puts his... Yeah, weaving the web of magic with his hands more than with words. Um, uh, when the spell was whole, he said, Ged. And then not looking at the falcon, he waited some while, then turned and got up and the boy was there. And I put, what, no money for special effects? <laughs> 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 it's like one of those things, it's like in a TV show, you turn around, it's like, oh, they transformed, but yes. we didn't see it. Yes, costume change. And this is, we get Ogi and thinking about how he knows that you can't just change into, or as a young lad, he wanted to just ah. be the type of wizard that would change into everything. He wanted to be that shape-shifting yep. druid that would change into everything, have fun, be every sort of animal, and then he realized you can't do that. <laughs> you can't it's do that. It's disrupting the natural course of things. And you lose yourself in those yeah. animals. Right. And he recalls the guy that turned into a bear. Do you remember that's exactly what Sparrowhawk wanted to do when he first met Ogian? He's right. like, why don't we just run through the woods and like change shape all the time? Yeah. Ogian had wanted the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's that nice story about the bear, the man who became the well, bear. I don't know about a nice his... story. <laughs> well, he killed his son and then was yeah. hunted down and, and killed. Yeah. yeah. And how many dolphins in the sea are actually wizards? Yeah, I like that part. That right. was pretty cool. Wizards like to be dolphins, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's her way I mean, of explaining why dolphins are quote unquote intelligent. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I like that, but yeah, so he knows like this is it's dangerous. Yeah, and Ged didn't talk for a long time, and he knew that he didn't have any speech in him, or uh, he right. Ogian knew that from this situation. Yeah, let's let's sleep it off, kid. Let's sleep it off. When he does find words, he says such things as "I left you a fool, and I have returned as one as well." Mm-hmm. But how wise? It's a nice little circle, yes. right? That, the, and I'd yeah. like to point out that he came to be the apprentice of Ogian on Sun Return, and now he's been gone for six or seven years, and he's returning on Sun Return. And at the end of the chapter, Ogian says, "Good hunting, my son." Or something like that. Mm. He calls him his son. Yeah, you're right. I don't think any of that's a coincidence. Definitely not. And plus, with what Ogian tells us later, it all makes sense. What does Ogian tell us by way of explanation to Sparrowhawk? There's a lot of not talking that goes on. Well, it's but Ogian the, the silence. Yes, I'm just kind of reiterating that. So the few words he says have the meaning of you have to become the hunter. Yeah. Can't run. You have to stop being chased. You need to. Mm. He said, turn around. That's what he said. Turn around before that, before the turnaround thing. Ogian's also very, it's curious to him that the shadow knows Ged's name. He's like strange. It is strange because he didn't tell him his name. Nobody told the shadow. Because of his that, name. Ogie and then said, like Sparrowhawk's like, I don't know his name. I can't defeat it. How am I supposed like I can't do that? And then that Ogian's like, Well, he knows your name. Right. And in him saying that, to me it it meant that so there must be a way to figure out his name. Even though Archmage Gensher told us in chapter whatever the heck that the things that come from that land have no names. And also the lady, Surrette, told us that there are lots of names that aren't on the namers list that they know nothing about. Do we believe her or not? 
I oh, kind of, I, totally I do. believe her. I yeah, yeah me too. Absolutely, it I mean, makes obviously. perfect sense. And even Ogi and I think would would, uh, would say the same. Like we don't know everything, but everything has a name. Like that is the core uh-huh. of it. Even if you don't know uh-huh. it, it's there. He named him at the river. Okay. Uh huh. Under shadow. A stream that falls from the mountain to the sea. A man would know the end he goes to, but he cannot know if he does not turn and return to his beginning and hold that beginning in his being. If he would not be a stick whirled and whelmed in the stream, he must be the stream itself, all of it, from its spring to its sinking into the sea. That's a that's a lot of metaphors. <laughs> there's a lot going on there. There's a lot going on, but there's definitely like a circular pattern to it, like returning to the source and etc. Uh, I mean, I don't really know what to take from it. That sounds like wisdom that's beyond me, right? You returned to Gaunt. You returned to me, Ged. Now turn clear round and seek the very source and that which lies before the source. There lies your hope of strength. Oh, my jeez. <laughs> okay, well... Um... So Ogian's explanation is turn around and seek the source. I assume he means like a grander thing than just like the source of wizard's power, you know? Uh, I think that he is part of this shadow thing, and uh, that's that's all I'm going to really say. Wait, you think Ogin's evil? No, I think that Sparrowhawk and this shadow thing are like mirrors of each other. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh Uh-huh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we talked about that before, and I thought that before so so i can see wanting to go to the source because at the source they're probably the same thing sure right that they're uh-huh. all they're they're unified at the source so i think of it as like a triangle but at the same time like it really sounds like words that i'm not supposed to understand right mm-hmm. now but it's supposed to sound wise definitely and so i'm supposed to feel a certain feeling going forward and i kind of do like hope like yeah like mm. Yeah, like he can't tell him exactly what to do because he doesn't really know what's going to happen. The biggest lesson he learned, he just learned when he came back to Ogin and said, like, I left a fool, I've, re- I've returned a fool. It sounds like he didn't learn anything, but he did. Like, he understands. <laughs> yeah, he definitely you know? learned some stuff. Like, he left a fool and he's still a fool, but he learned a lot of stuff within that time. And him saying that is admitting that. And and that's when Ogin calls him his son, essentially. Yes, and then Ogian also and gives says, him a staff. Oh my! Well, that was he just le- he like left and said, "What did he say? He had to go like hunting or fishing or something." I don't know. He was going somewhere. He made an excuse. He didn't even, yep. which I thought was cute. Like it was a total surprise, and yeah. he just starts whittling this yew staff. It is his birthday. Yeah, and he explains that what's his name? Genscher chose a yew staff, and he um, and he agreed that it was good, and so he chose the same. Mm-hmm. And a yew uh, staff. He meant the shaft for a longbow, but it's better this way. Good night, my son. That is historically accurate. The English longbowmen used U bows. A lot of love there in those brief sentences. Yeah, between the two. Yeah, it was a it was a nice homecoming. Mm-hmm. You remember we had we had talked about that in chapter two as well that mm-hmm. you can never go home again. Yes, and I was like, what? I didn't what? Like, was that real? Was it a metaphor? Well, you can't ever go home again. Like, he can never be the 13-year-old boy that he was. But he must go home again. <laughs> he has to go back to the beginning. Well, he's seeing it. I'm not sure exactly what he's seeing or what what's in store for us. I know that the next chapter is called Hunting. Yeah. So I have a feeling he's going to go out looking for old shadow friend. Well, he's taking Ogin's advice. Yeah, he leaves in the night. Doesn't He leaves a little note I... on the hearth and he's gone. Yeah, like a like yeah. a... A properly trained... That's exactly what Ogian would have wanted, you know? Goodbyes are hard. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. And there, he's a man of few words. He explained yes. everything he needs to. And I assume he's going to be pondering on this name thing in the meantime. Because yeah, Ogian, so. just the fact... He said, strange, strange. Like, he's very concerned about this. To me, that's him being very concerned. I remember at the beginning, when we first started the recording, that you said you really liked this chapter. Well, I liked how, like we said already, we got a lot of different information, um, even if it's stuff we may have already known. It's kind of maybe being told to us in a different sort uh-huh. of way. We got good confirmation on several things. I like seeing Ogian again. I, like, I did too. I that liked was really the growth nice. in character. Yep. Forget. Yep. Um, 
I liked seeing Sorette again, although that's not her name. It just means silver. I knew that she was going to pop up again. Like this, that's the sort of thing where it's like, I feel like there's a couple people we'll probably see again. I wonder if we see Jasper again at some point too. Oh, we have to. We have I mean, we to. got too much Jasper to not and, see Jasper um, Vetch. again. And Vetch. Vetch. Like both, as, yeah. As well. We've got to see Vetch those shared two his, again. his actual true name with Ged. That's and right. Ged. Ged and and basically likewise. said, like, come to me at some yeah. time. And, yeah. Come and hang out. Yeah. Yeah. So did you find it interesting that when Sparrowhawk saw Sorette at the very end, like her guise of beauty had been evaporated? Oh, I don't and remember. And what that. he saw was a beautiful woman, but she looked more witchy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Still beautiful, but mm, witchy. So let's talk about that. So specifically in that chapter two, because like I said, I just listened to it. It's been seven years. I, and I know people grow into things, and if we're talking about real world, like, duh, people, taste you know, ugly ducklings too. and taste changes. Uh-huh. But I feel like because it was written down and said, and that she's kind of become this, like, beautiful seductress type of a thing, like, there's got to be something there, don't you think? I mean, I'm not, I'm not really sure what you're asking me. I feel like it makes a lot of sense for somebody who's now seven years older and, like, around 20 years old to be beautiful. That, that I think sense. she has, like I was saying before been groomed has learned a few things soft skills i got if i brush my hair maybe i'll attract a better man sort of thing. i felt bad for her um sparrowhawk described her as having no joy i forget mm. the exact word yeah, she never laughed was, i think is what there it was said. no there she was like nothing. slightly smiled every once in a while but never laughed no merriment i think that was the line never laughs mm-hmm. and then you know you find out that she's locked in the tower and can't escape and I don't know. I just feel I just and like obviously was doing the bidding of her mom and, you know, earlier on and now she's here and it just feels it feels like the really like the books that were written in the 1800s by all of the famous women, the mm-hmm. Brontes, Jane Austens, et cetera. You know, that kind of like lifestyle, you know, that what the what life held for married women. off and you basically just yeah do the household whatever's and sit that's there that's what and, it sounds like has happened mm-hmm. to her that she still had that life that women don't really want and the way this book is written or presented we're only getting little snippets we don't really get much. we don't know anything that happened in the middle we don't really know what no, her main true. motivations are and we don't know if she's only driven by the stone even though we have evidence that things led up to this point uh well we may never know it didn't look like a life i would want for one of my daughters but i'm also not an enchantress <laughs> so maybe that's what enchantresses want for their daughters i loved it i loved this chapter um especially the first two thirds or whatever the stuff that took place at Terranon, because of like the you know seeing that the raven had spoken you know mm. and then seeing the linking and the connection between the warning that Genscher had given, like all of those things like came to kind of a, a, a singular moment in this chapter. And it was just really good. And the entire time he's like enchanted, you know? right? And yeah. like he can't think clearly. He likes to look, he just kind of like likes to stare at this girl. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing. And I really like the, the beauty of part. the lady of the keep confused his mind, but there was no merriment in the lady of the keep. Yeah, like, I really liked all that, but then when we got to the, the second part, and he flies away, or like, and it just starts, like, Ogian had returned to Riel I was like, ah, yay! Okay, here's something that Ogian says. Uh, this is uh, Shadowhawk doing that whole, like, I won't stay here long, because I can't have the shadow here to hurt you. And then Ogian's like, no, that was but the foreboding of it. The shadow uh-huh. of a shadow, talking about the past. Oh, yeah. I could yeah. not drive it forth now, only you could do that. Ogin's not even powerful enough to defeat this thing right now. We we heard something about that previously, and it might have been from Genscher saying that like only you could have summoned this thing in the first place. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and and remember how Vetch tried to defend Sparrowhawk from it and couldn't, like mm-hmm. he was stuck. Mm-hmm. So it's it seems to me like no one can, and it's not saying anything about Sparrowhawk's power necessarily. It's just that the, the problem was created for this particular person. He is the and, one no one else can interfere yeah right i feel like it's kind of like one of those things i agree ah there was a i thought we got also confirmation that the otak was dead 
I think so. Like, doesn't he? Because I think wouldn't, he regards he, it twice. He found it, and then I think he considered it later. I, I thought it was he? two moments. I don't think so. Not that I remember. I just remember, mm. like, there's no mention of it in the second half. Maybe the mention of it that I'm thinking of came from me going, like, what happened to the Otok? And then I feel like the that. Otok's going to come back, though, too. No, there is. It's mentioned twice. I have them both underlined. It says from... What, what it was the, the Otok. It's fine, short fur, all clogged in... All clogged with blood. That's on 143. Mm -hmm. And then the Otok is mentioned again on top of 144. Oh. He says, but Ged stooped and plucked a blade of wild grass, poked up dry and frail out of the snow where the Otok had lain dead. Okay, let's talk about the Otok for a second. What was the point? Okay, so I was wondering about this as well. Because I remember what Vetch had said about the... Uh, the beasts that choose people and, and you know how like those people can be spoken to by the old powers of stone and spring. Mm, and so mm -hmm, I was like, okay, mm -hmm. so that's an indication that Sparrowhawk is one of those people to whom the old powers can speak. The way that Vetch explained it though, to me, it didn't come across like, uh, it was almost like it was a legend. Like anything was going to talk to him and it can talk to him because this thing talked to him, not, the that it, it's not that the old like powers jerks. can talk to him just because this thing talked to him. You know what I mean? Just just because the Otok went to him, that wasn't the moment that made no. Ged be able to talk to the old things. He always was. Yes, I agree that. Uh, yes, I interpret it the exact same way. But it, it seemed to me like when Vetch was talking about it, it wasn't a big deal. But in reality, like the old powers are bad news. Like you don't want to talk to them. Again, I ask, what's up with the Otok then? And also just, boom, it's dead. Well, I, su I suspect that it was either not allowed to enter when Sparrowhawk entered, or it stopped to slow down the shadow. I feel like we would have got that as an explanation. Remember how tired he was exhausted and et cetera, and like he was not clear-headed, like he, he barely had enough energy to get to the Why tower and Why would the Otok be anywhere but like in his hood like it always is, though? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know I don't either. Know. I feel like they could have just killed it and thrown it out of the gate like, once he was in, even too. Like That's also possible. That's certainly possible. Are there old powers that are good versus old powers that are bad? Maybe the old talk when would you have... say <laughs> When you say old power of spring and stone, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, nature deities. Sure. But right? those are usually those old nature deities are the ones long lost to time. And who knows what they're really all about. Well, this thing's lost to time. Yes, for sure. I mean, sure. essentially, like, it's, it was waiting for Sparrowhawk the for some particular reason. The Otok just dies. It just it's dead. Yeah. It doesn't just die, but it's just dead. I feel like it was handled in such a way that I, I'm expecting more. When we were with him in the Otok, which was barely at all, like, there, like, nothing ever happened with them. Like, it's just kind of there every once in a while. So it could just be that the Otok was an oversight throughout and she was finally like, you know what? Let's just kill this damn thing. It's just that constantly doesn't in the way. Make and I keep sense. forgetting that it's even there. I don't. That doesn't make I sense. I forgot. I forgot. We were going through lots of that chapters. That is my point, though. Like, it's there, but it's not really there. Nothing ever happens with it. And now it's just dead. Yeah. It's just yeah, weird. Yeah. It's just in the way. It was constantly. He finally sat on it. But yeah. he liked it. Was it. In, it wasn't in, it was the, in the way. Wrong pocket. It always hid perfectly and that's why you liked it because it hid no i'm saying ged liked it i don't who cares what i think about it ged liked it sparrowhawk yeah. liked it whatever oh, whatever it's weird i think it will he come didn't up have again. time to mourn and Something's now he's angry. gonna happen i'm just curious yeah. what he has switched into anger hunting mode you think he's oh. angry oh yeah i would be that's not a good emotion to go into this too though i don't think what are you Star Warsing me right now? Yeah, give it to the dark side. No, I'm Ogian you. Um, Ogian gave him the staff of you that was intended for a longbow, but he said this was more appropriate. Right, this was better. He can shoot magic arrows with this. Well, what do they do with magic? The only magic bind. I have seen. I would seen, assume bind. There was the binding of the dragon's wings that caused them to drown, but there's been no like overt like pa power, like you know, pew 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 laser beams or whatever. Oh sure, sure. You mean like a magic missile or something? There's been light comes something. flooding out of them and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I don't know, but my expectation is is it's a weapon that this staff is a weapon, but it's a weapon of the spirit. Uh huh. So then, why would have Ogin first thought to make a bow then? 
Well, I mean, he wasn't thinking he was going to have to make a staff for an apprentice. His apprentice already had a staff. He didn't know it was going to burn up. He literally went out, got the U. I assume at yeah. that mo- moment he was thinking about making the bow. And then he turned no, it into he a staff. No, he was growing it. He what? was growing. He was nurturing the U tree in the right shape to make a bow. Where does it's it like, say you that? Don't just, Where does it it's say just that? How it's, it doesn't. It's just how it's done. Fine. It's just how it's done. You That's... identify a plant. Jill, people plant trees to get a particular shape out of them to do things. That's, That's fine. That's how shipbuilding is done. find it. That's awesome. That seems like something that not everyone's just going to know. He had planned to use it for a bow, which means that he knew it existed before that moment. Okay. Right? That's what that means. Fine. Why fine? I'm agreeing. I'm, I hear you. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I'm not going to argue agreeing, with it. You're agreeing mad. You're like, fine. <laughs> you don't like the outcome. <laughs> Just move on. Well, we're done. Was there anything that you found in here that you think deserves more attention that we glossed over or... I don't think so. I just wrote a little smiley face at the end. Because happy. the Otak died? Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it was a really particularly good chapter. But do you see what I mean now about like maybe I maybe maybe we overlooked something in the previous chapter? No. Maybe not. It's possible that Well, explain you know, to me what you're saying. Well, I just feel like there was a lot there was a lot of stuff that referenced previous chapters in this chapter. Right, little hints and clues that we had been picking up along the way, and that's as appropriate because the human memory is such that it is, you know, that it can remember reading this detail or that. I detail. think a lot of those things, though, um, are really good, like on a reread, let's say, to like find and go, oh, interesting. But I also think a lot of that was just the premonition, like we kind of mm-hmm. we know what's going to be happening, like the yeah. shadows chasing him. These things right. are going to come back. Like, I don't think it's as important to the story moving forward as Definitely. as in more of a reread sort of situation the the words of the raven i never would have remembered that i did not at all how did you remember that i just i just you were went editing to look. oh no i just i just went back to look because i was looking for it was the warning about the north and so i wanted to know if it was nemeral that had warned him about the north or if it was gensher and it was gensher but um, I ended up back there because I was double checking and there it was. And I was like, oh, my God, Terranon. What? <laughs> the bird knew. Yeah, the I didn't bird remember. Knew. I didn't remember. No, that's it. absolutely crazy. But it's also the kind of thing that doesn't matter until you. Exactly. It until doesn't. Until you at least get to the court yeah. of Terranon. Right. You know? it do- and it doesn't hurt the story if you didn't remember it either. You, because no, you already it, know he's kind of being driven towards this place. Like that doesn't matter all so it much. Does is Just cool. reward you for rereading. Yeah, that's what it does. And I applaud her for crafting this novel because it's it's a pleasure to read it. It's really really well crafted and written. So, all right. Well, that's it for this episode. Do you have any final words, Gab? Really good chapter. I'm excited for the rest of the book. Excited for the next chapter. Oh, so am I. I like I like revenge stories, so I'm really <laughs> looking forward to hunting. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I wonder though if whatever this ending is will be satisfying in that way for you. Ooh. Or if it's Ooh. gonna be more uh, uh, I mean you I don't know, care. metaphorical. It could or... be metaphorical. I don't know. I, I, I don't feel know good about the future. I feel really optimistic. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Alright. So thank you for joining us. We guys uh ooh, that doesn't that's not words. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this episode. We will see you in chapter eight, nine days. Bye, Blab. Bye, Gab.